My name is Antoine Corrad. I'm working as gaming application engineer at Intel for now uh, three years. So my job is to work together with game developers in order to um, help them optimizing their titles for Intel hardware and in general to provide a better um, experience for, for the gamers. So in the past three years, I've been working with um, some of the big studios such as DICE. I've been on Battlefield. I've been working with the Arma series. On the mobile side, I've been working with Gameloft and yeah, a lot of, uh, of developers. And whenever I said I work at Intel and I'm part of the gaming team, I always have the same question. It's like, oh, what does Intel has to do with gaming? So, I mean, for you guys, you probably already know because you have more knowledge than uh, most barbarians out there. And um, uh, you know a bit more about the gaming industry as a, as a developer. So today, I want to show you a bit more, maybe teach you some of the other stuff Intel is doing um, in the gaming industry. We're going to talk about where we are now, what we offer you, and where we're going, and a bit about the future of gaming as well. So information in this document is provided in connection with the Intel products, except as provided as in Intel terms and conditions. OK. Uh, yeah, uh, Intel's legal is worse than uh, Big Brothers. They are, they know exactly what I'm saying, so I had to put that one in my slide. Uh, outline of the talk, that's what I just mentioned, why, why, why I am here and we are here over there in the, in the booth. And we're going to talk about the past, the present, uh, and how, like some hints, how you guys can get ready for the future um, in the gaming industry. So. I wanted to start with some numbers that you guys might have seen, might not have seen. Um, so at the last year, in 2014, um, Intel shipped 46 million CPUs for tablets on Android. Um, that uh, makes us now number two um, behind Apple as the um, CPU tablet provider, uh, tablet CPU provider. And uh, that's why you'll see later on that it's important for you guys if you want to support this maximum uh, of devices that you also enable um, and compile your Android game for x86. 711 million of PC gamers in 2014. Um, hopefully, uh, you guys know that we are that many playing on the PC uh, uh, market. And then 344 million, that's approximately the, the estimates how many PCs are going to be shipped this year. Um, and among those, approximately 80% have Intel chips inside. So Intel has a rich heritage of interaction with the gaming industry since forever. And what we like about the gaming world is that gaming is an industry that's really fast paced and that's changing a lot. If you look at um, what was 10, 20 years ago to now, you see that it's like always changing and moving forward and pushing the hardware to its limit. I mean, if people were only doing uh, browsing and working on their laptops, we wouldn't need to bring new devices every year. We just have the same chips since 10 years. They're powerful enough to go on Facebook. And so, yeah, in the past 10 to 20 years, we came from the place where the gaming was something on desktop or on console to a place where you bring gaming to um, some uh, more powerful um, desktop still. But now you can also play on laptops, on tablets, on phones. And that's, um, that's currently um, where gaming is at the moment. Um, in the future, we'll see a bit later what we are. Um, this gives you a little hint. DX12 is a big one, real sense. I don't know for those of you guys who've seen what we were showing on the show floor is an interesting topic. And we have other stuff we wanted to mention. So growing momentum on um, Intel tablets. So that's uh, for that part, it's mostly about the Android world, where we are at the moment. So we came in late in the market. We, released, we should offer tablets in uh, 2012. Um, and simply, I mean, even though Unity was supporting x86 on Windows for a while, um, they announced the support for x86 architecture only last year. 
And Intel has been growing in this market really, really, really fast. And right now, as I said earlier, we are already number two um, behind Apple. So there is um, approximately 200 devices already on the market supporting um, Intel hardware. Um, and such has, such, some of them have like pretty big names. I mean, we have the Nexus player from Google, which is uh, an um, Android TV. And, which, and it's, in my opinion, one of the best um, casual console to play. And we have devices from all of the other um, um, hardware provider. So for you guys, as, as, great develop as developers, great developers, yeah, um, it's, it's an opportunity. And well, I mean, if you, div if you ship your game on Android, you, won't, you might as well want to be able to ship it on as many devices as possible. So you might ask me, hey, how do we get, um, do we compile our games for x86? Well, it's been, it's quite simple. We've been working a lot with Unity to get that running. Right now on Unity 5, and I believe starting in Unity 4.4 or something. Uh, sorry? OK, yeah, 4.5. Uh, it's uh, simply don't change the default settings. And you're going to build an, a, uh, an APK that includes both ARM binaries and x86 binaries. And you're going to make sure that your game is going to run on a um, maximum of um, devices. On the, so enough about the Android focus. On the um, graphics side, Intel has, is right now uh, providing graphic solution for all of the Spectrum. So we go from tablet. We've had, as you have you seen, a couple of tablets with the um, HD graphics. Uh, we have laptops with uh, HD graphics and also the Iris Pro brand, and we have those mini PCs. And what people don't know is that at the moment, Intel 70% of the PCs shipped um, at the moment have Intel GPUs inside, and. Um, it's a great opportunity, again, for you guys to have those, um, those, your games running on those systems. So some people have been looking at Intel graphics in the past uh, few years. And what some of you don't know, probably, is that since 2006, when I believe when we released our first solutions, we've had more than 100% uh, performance improvement. So I agree with you guys. It used to suck. Um, at the moment, we have a pretty, pretty good performance. And I'll show you a demo later of uh, the Viking Village, uh, one of the Unity 5.0 demo that's running great simply on a um, micro uh, mini PC um, that we have here. On the tool side, so for you game developers, I don't know if you're familiar with um, uh, Graphics Performance Analyzer. So this is the tool I'm using on a daily basis, and all of my team are using on a daily basis in order to optimize games for Intel platforms. So these tools can give you um, really, really easily hardware metrics and tell you where exactly your bottleneck is. And it's available on Windows, and you can also analyze Android applications. Um, Hardware-wise, it said it supports Intel Atom uh, Android devices. Um, officially, we're not allowed to um, do any compatibility testing, so it might crash. But it also, actually, it won't give you as much information, but it also gives you um, details on the performance or of other uh, hardware providers. We have tested it on um, Mali, Adreno, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's the perfect transition um, for me towards the future, because you guys already do profiling on your games, and you're using the one tool that's the uh, Unity profiler. And um, in the future, we've been working really close with Unity again. Um, you're all familiar with the right side of the screen. It's the Unity profiler. It tells you exactly um, where your bottleneck is if you spend more time in post-processing, et cetera, et cetera. But it doesn't tell you exactly what your bottleneck is. So we've been working with Unity, who they gave us access to their source code, and we've been adding all of the hardware metrics that we internally have access to 
um, the Unity profiler. So can you read the left side from the back or? Oh, wait. OK. Um, so basically, that's the kind of metrics you're also going to have now. So now you can look, ha have a look at any time and say, OK, I'm limited by uh, post-processing. <coughs> and then you see, oh, in, like, that's a bad example, because like, users are mostly idle. But like, oh, I'm bottlenecked by the sampler. So you might think, well, if the sampler is bottlenecked, it's simply like texture size that's um, the limiting factor. If you see that, uh, for instance, your uh, execution units are uh, stored in the pixel shader, you might think, oh, my pixel shader might be a bit too complex. I, that's where I should look exactly, and I know where to um, look in order to optimize uh, my game. So we're, I'm pretty excited to have that um, in one of the next version of uh, Unity. Uh, Microsoft and Intel collaboration on DX12. So one of the big, big steps this year in the gaming world is uh, DirectX 12. Uh, you guys have probably all heard of it. Um, it's an important milestone because it brings to the PC the same level and the same freedom of programming than um, the console. And it enables even more capabilities on the uh, on less powerful hardware, such as mini PCs, et cetera, et cetera, simply because as it reduces a lot the CPU work, basically it can give you more, it can give more power available to the GPU and enable way better performance on, um, on those devices. So I have a small demo I wanted to show you. Um, so as we've been working with Microsoft from the day one, we've already had uh, certified drivers. We're just waiting for Microsoft to release um, their, uh, their, well, Windows 10, so that will I will. So this is an asteroid demo. Uh, it's rendering approximately 100,000 asteroids. Um, and you can see that the performance is approximately 70 FPS. It's OK. It's not that much of a um, workload. So the difference is, if you look at the DX11 version, well, you only get 30 FPS for the exact same workload. So potentially, you can get more than 2x performance simply by, um, by just going from DX11 to um, DX12. And the other side of things is that, OK, you're going to tell me, well, I don't care running at 70 FPS. You can also get amazing power saving just from it. So if I lock the frame rate, so I believe those are locked at 20 FPS. Uh, you can see that with DX12, you only consume um, approximately here 20 watts, 21 watt of power for the overall system. And for the same workload, so at the exact same performance with DX11, it consumes way more power, and you're here at um, 36 watt. Um, you're going to tell me, oh, that's nice, right? But we're not writing the code. Uh, ourselves, and we're not going to have a look at uh, DX12 uh, until Unity does. The good news is that we've also been working really close with Unity, and I actually already have here um, one of the first version of the Unity uh, engine running um, the Viking Village demo uh, with DX12. So that's basically what it looks like. It's all it's the Viking demo. They showed it for the first time at GDC this year. And uh, it's running, uh, so it's all physically based rendering. Um, and Unity has a working version of their, uh, of their engine already. Uh, I believe they announced yesterday at the roadmap that they released that in December. And probably for you guys, you're going to be able to enjoy that much performance improvement for free. Um, knowing Unity as soon as um, they release, and it's probably going to be a simple checkbox um, for you guys to do that. Can I switch back to So yeah, as I said, DX12 is coming this year. Uh, get ready for it, and as soon as uh, it releases, create a version um, of it. All of the hardware providers, AMD, NVIDIA, 
have been also working with Microsoft, and they're also going to support it from uh, launch. Another thing we're really exciting about is uh, what we call, in general, human-machine interaction. There's a lot of uh, talk about VR, about AR, uh, and it's a really uh, interesting topic. We want to um, look into it. And we are basically trying to enhance uh, the human-machine interaction. And we've been launching this here in more than, um, I believe, 40 uh, different laptops. Um, the real sense technology. So basically, real sense technology is a 3D camera that's integrated in the bezel of either your laptop or your uh, all-in-one, or even on some tablets, and um, that all allows you to sense basically everything that's around you. So that 3D camera can do face recognition, hands recognition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so it's been used in the industry already. We have some use cases where people are actually using that 3D camera to scan objects and create a, so it's a packaging company that creates the right size package for all, every object just by, simply by scanning them. We've seen use case with a um, shoemaker that's actually scanning the shape of the, sh of the foot and it's going to tell you, oh, that's the kind of shoes you need and you're going to be comfortable in there. And in the gaming world, there's a lot, a lot we can, d we can do with it. So in the, um, playing uh, time, so you can play and add some interaction. Um, if you do some face scanning, you could p potentially have your own avatar, and you'd be able to see, play with your friends and see exactly if they're smiling or if they, um, if they are sad or if when they're talking, you'd see their lips moving, their li the lips of the avatars moving, etc. So that can be some um, pretty cool use case. For the artists, we've already have some question and some people working on being able to scan an object and import it directly into the game, um, which is a pretty cool um, use case as well. So yeah, as I said, Intel is working with Unity to help uh, you deliver the games on the maximum devices you can. It's, with Unity, it's fairly easy to do that. Um, so it goes from the tablet world to the laptop to the desktop, and we're providing solutions and tools for you guys to um, do all of it. So quick summary. Um, we've seen a bit about the past, the present, and where we, uh, as you tell, think uh, um, gaming is going. Um, we've been listening to um, the people from the gaming industry, and we try to adapt our roadmap as much as we can so that uh, we match gamers and, um, and developers' expectation. And if you have any feedback on where you'd like Intel to go, what kind of products is going to be important for you guys in the future, feel free to um, talk to us. Um, we are uh, really looking forward to a fifth generation core that's releasing now that's bringing even more uh, graphics performance, the real sense technology, the X12, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have any questions? All right, then I think we are done. Thank <laughs> you.